Networking, Security, and Wireshark. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm back. So it's been a long time. I think it's actually been about six to eight months of me not posting videos. So first and foremost, apologies for those of you who have been looking out for new content. Um, there's a number of good reasons why, uh, and I'll get to some of them. But uh, I want to say, uh, those of you who do use this content for educational purposes, for training, uh, again, I do apologize. But uh, as always, I'm always juggling a bunch of different priorities. Uh, so I want to explain a little bit about what I was working on while I was out. And then secondly, I want to get some feedback from you as to what videos you want to see. Um, so I had uh, started this channel as really just something to... Uh, as an outlet outside of work, you know, aside from what I'm going to explain to you is number one, I have a full-time job, which is in the business of global infrastructure. So as you can imagine, it's incredibly busy. Um, but aside from that, uh, there have been projects that I've been working on as well on the side. This channel started as one of those projects and I never meant for it to actually have the popularity it did. I really just wanted some way of sharing some of the knowledge I had with uh, some folks across the globe. Um, and it's funny because even after not touching the channel for something like six to eight months, uh, my sub count is now at 17.4 K subs. Uh, I think when I left, it was something like 15,000. So the user base has been steadily climbing. Thank you all for subscribing. Those of you who are new to the channel, those of you who've been around for a long time. Um, it's really incredible to see the amount of uh, consistent feedback I'm still getting, as well as subscribers that are just join, jumping onto the channel and, uh, and tuning in. So thank you. And again, I promise some more content coming in the subsequent weeks and months. So um, aside from my job uh, and aside from the thanks, what was I working on? So let's get into that. So the project that I've been working on is a bit of a logical extension to what I had built in NetProbe. Netprobe Lite. So some of you may have seen the video on Netprobe Lite. Um, if you haven't, go check it out, download it, install it. Um, that project as well has been getting a lot of great feedback, even though, again, I haven't touched it in a long time. I do intend to. I do have some things that I'm working on that I want to release soon. But the idea is that without you being able to know over time the reliability of your home internet connection, uh, you have no data to be able to show, okay, well, how reliable is this connection versus say my neighbor versus how reliable is it today versus yesterday versus a month ago. That data over time is incredibly valuable to have uh, on an individual level in terms of your own connection. So that's what NetProbe Lite does, right? It records that data, puts it into a, uh, a uh, Prometheus database so you can visualize it in Grafana, um, go check out that project. Uh, however, that works at a local um, scope, meaning it only works for your own connection that you're monitoring or wherever you deploy NetProbe Lite, right? Um, there's a similar issue with internet access to the public internet uh, in the whole region, meaning how do you know if I'm having internet connections with this PC, right? So let's just pull up the whiteboard. So if I have a PC here and I cannot connect so i'm sad to the internet right how do i know if that is a me problem meaning like a local problem here or a problem with my internet service provider which is as we've talked about before the conduit between you and this thing known as the internet which is really just a collection of networks you usually don't Unless, one, you call, right? You call the ISP, you wait for about an hour to understand, uh, you know, if there's something going on in your area. Or number two, they sometimes have outage maps which show you, um, you know, what's going on in their network. Now, these outage maps generally are based on social media sentiment slash complaints. All right, my text is rusty after this much time complaints okay meaning like they're not actually providing you real telemetry from the devices in their network they're just showing you what their customers are complaining about right um 
which is not really act you know if if you have an internet connection in a small town they're likely not going to show that on an outage map they're probably only going to show the really big outages that are coming through and then what's more is that you don't necessarily know if your isp that you're subscribed to is stable over time right so remember what we talked about with netprobe which is the point of netprobe is that you could actually go in and you could take a look at how the internet connectivity is doing over time and that's valuable because it's not just a speed test which does it once and then that's only a snapshot of that one minute right you need to know what it looks like over a course of uh you know a day a week a month right so not just the one time you need to see what the trend looks like over time and that data is not available anywhere else right uh the isp so say whatever verizon in the u.s they know what Verizon knows. They know about Verizon outages. Um, they're not going to tell you, but they know about Verizon outages. Um, but they don't know about their partner or like their competitors' outages. And certainly no one knows about all the outages at once to be able to compare and say, look, look, this is the performance of ISP1. And maybe the performance of ISP2 is like this, like rock solid, for instance, right? So that's what I've been working on, is a tool that does exactly that. So let's get into that. So the tool that I came up with to solve that problem was NetStats. So NetStats is effectively a distributed internet connectivity monitor for the public internet, meaning it's monitoring and testing connectivity to and from the internet from multiple different internet service providers across entire countries. So pretty big. And I think hopefully, hopefully that explains why it's been so long. Um, again, full-time job plus doing a project on the side. But what NetStats is, um, it allows you to do is to navigate through various regions in your country, right? So in this case, it's deployed to Canada uh, as our primary starting country, but we plan to expand in future. And lets you look at data in, in real time about outages in a specific area. So as an example, if I zoom into this area here, this is Etobicoke, Canada, I can see that at 2.45 p.m. yesterday, Rogers Cable, which is one of the providers in Canada, had an outage of about, that affected about 135 users, okay? So and I can keep doing the same for any location that we monitor, which in this case is every location in Canada. So the map is incredibly useful for that purpose of, you know, what we talked about. I'm having an issue in my, my neighborhood. My internet connectivity is having problems. Is it me or is it the actual carrier? This will tell you if it is the actual carrier. And if I zoom out, you can see the entire country is monitored. The red dots are alerts from the last 24 hours. And I can zoom into any of the areas in the map and then get more information by clicking on the actual alert about where it was, what time it was, how many customers impacted, but I can also then look down here and see the filtered list. If I zoom out, the list down here automatically updates to everything within the viewport, right? So just from an end user perspective, this is incredibly useful for you to be able to go in and just see what the trends are, if there's something that's actually brewing in your neighborhood, and potentially take this data back to your ISP to say, hey, you know, you're saying that there's no outage, but I actually have independent data showing that there was an outage at about, say, 1.25 p.m. to Rogers in Dieppe, New Brunswick. So this is hopefully helpful, helpful to users um, to just have as a bookmark to say, hey, I'm going to bookmark this. It's going to update itself on its own. This is the last 20. This will, by default, show you the last 24 hours of data. Um, if you do have an IP that is within the countries that are being monitored, uh, in this case, this is not my personal IP. This is a VPN that I'm using. Um, it will actually show you if there's any IP alerts detected for your IP. Okay, so if any of these alerts on the map correlate to your IP address, this will actually turn red and show you that there's an alert. You can click on it, and it'll zoom down, zoom down to your location, right? This is a VPN IP, so naturally the actual VPN endpoint is probably somewhere in Toronto. And you can click on it to actually see what that alert is, if it does affect you, right? If not, it'll show up as green, but you may have 
other ISPs in your area. In this case, for example, looks like we have both uh, Kojiko. Let's see the list here. Kojiko and Beanfield in the downtown area of Toronto that had air issues over the last 24 hours. So aside from the actual map, we have a lot of stats that get aggregated towards the bottom. So here, for example, we have how many outages did we detect across Canada for the last 24 hours? 152. How many users do we estimate were impacted? Around 7,000 or 77.6k. Um, what was the largest outage? So for example, here it looks like 600 users were affected uh, from Videotron, which is a big provider in Quebec. And St. Jerome, same thing, I can click on St. Jerome and go take a look at what happened. And like, oh, looks like there was a whole bunch of outages at the same time. Or maybe they're unrelated, but I can actually just go down here to the list and see what was going on, if any of the outages times match up. And for example, we can find the big one, which is over here, right? St. Jerome at 135. Looks like we also had an outage here uh, from Videotron as well in an adjacent city, St. Columban. Sorry, I'm not French. Um, same time, same network, right? Videotron at 135, also in this town here in this postal code. So you can see it, it wasn't actually isolated to this town, it looks like it was actually a widespread Videotron outage that affected multiple regions, right? But how would you tell if you didn't have this? How, how would, would Videotron come out and say, hey, we're having an outage and here's all the postal codes and here's all the IP addresses that are impacted? They absolutely would not, right? So that's the nice thing about the, uh, the, the stats aggregations. You can start seeing if you're not impacted, well, what's internet connectivity like in parts of the country that you don't live in? We also list the top 10 outages in the last 24 hours. So here, for example, uh, that St. Jerome outage was the biggest one, but we have others from across the country. And then we also have a nice little map here that shows you the top five ISPs by impact over the last 24 hours. So you can get a sense of when we're, you know, there's always outages going on, right? If you, if you work in networking, you know that there's things breaking all the time. Um, if you have a large global network, you're going to have devices going down, parts of the network going down. Um, you hope that you can control that to kind of a low level of outage like this over a course of time. And when you see something like this, this is that outage that I just showed you from above, where it wasn't just that one outage that we mentioned. That whole region seemed to have gone down um, and only from Videotron customers. This kind of thing, again, not just individually what's happening in your spot, but what's happening in the actual network of the carrier. Um, is not some data that is available and we're actually able to measure it independently and transparently for all carriers like we're not favoring a certain carrier we have no story here no bias we just want to monitor it for folks who live in canada so that's net stats and that's what i've been spending a lot of my time on um please check out the project uh check out the website it's, it's open it's free for anyone to use um even if you don't live in canada you can still go and check the data out uh, if you do live in Canada, we'd like to hear your feedback because it's uh, very relevant to you right now. We do have the ability to deploy this to any country on Earth uh, right now for testing and just while we're getting our um, getting off our feet or getting on our feet, I should say. Um, we only have it deployed to one country. Getting it deployed to many countries just increases your administrative overhead and complexity and cost. But we do have the ability, actually, through cloud to deploy this to any country we need to. So... If you have any feedback about this project, certainly post it in the notes or send us an email. Going back to the original slide, hopefully now you know what I was working on. Um, and I want to focus on number two, what videos do you want to see? Um, like I said, I want to get back into making just educational videos uh, for this channel. And um, I've gotten some feedback already on the comments about what folks want to see in terms of topics. Um, some people have emailed me. I want to just get a little bit more feedback from you, you know, what topics are, are important to you, what do you want to hear about, anything that's in the news, anything that you're doing for training to get into networking or security you want to hear about, um, post it in the comments, send me an email if you want to make a private, and uh, I'm going to put together kind of a short list of topics and then come back with some videos in the next few weeks. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions on the topic we've covered, please join the Discord server where we talk all things network. Until next time.